everybody, thanks for tuning in to Found Flicks. This time on Ending Explained, we'll be looking at the winner of our previous vote, 2013's Mama, the supernatural thriller where a spirit becomes the dangerous caregiver for two young girls. But before we get started, you know what we've got to do. Vote on the next viewer's choice ending explained. Your first choice is The Vault, involving a bank heist that leads to mayhem when something evil is discovered dwelling in the basement. Thanks to at Lil Gerbs on Twitter. And your second choice is Stephen King's 1922, where a rancher conspires to murder his wife for financial gain and convinces his teenage son to participate. Thanks to TMN656 on Instagram. You can vote by posting your choice in the comments below or by voting on the poll in the community tab. And for any video suggestions of any kind, send them my way on any of my social media accounts at Foundflix. And just so you know, if the movie you want doesn't win the vote, that doesn't mean that I won't do it ever or anything like that. So don't worry Shutter Island fans, I'll get to you before too long. That's a found flicks promise. Okay, back to Mama, which I completely forgot until rewatching is from the sibling team of Andy and Barbara Muschietti, who were also behind the extremely successful It remake from last year. Mama is their first feature length film, expanding on the short that got the pair discovered by none other than Guillermo del Toro. So let's break down the movie's important story moments, looking at who and what the spirit Mama is exactly, as well as explaining the quite fairy tale esque ending. Our story begins with a quite tragic turn of events. Hearing a gunshot from inside a normal looking home, then seeing a young girl Victoria and her even younger sister Lily overhearing the shot as their father Jeffrey rushes in and drags them away in a hurry, clearly distressed. His motivations might be a bit hard to pick up on, but senior partner stockbroker Jeffrey has suffered a mental breakdown brought on by a large stock market crash, causing him to violently react, killing his two business partners, other employees, and finally his estranged ex-wife that being the opening gunshot, and as we see right now, kidnap his two daughters. It also seems that Jeffrey is suffering from a mental disorder of some kind prior to this huge event, with the possibility of Jeffrey being bipolar, which could explain his actions. He should definitely be taking medication of some kind, but as we see when going for a bottle of pills, the bottle is empty, and he seems increasingly agitated after this, yelling at the girls to shut up as he dangerously barrels down the snowy roads at high speed. Victoria is right to be worried about his driving as it's moments later that the car swerves out of control, careening off a snowy embankment. Surviving the crash with minor injuries, the three stumble across a lonesome cabin amongst the woods and decide to seek refuge there. And it's apparent Jeffrey has no real plan, going off on his own crying and considers killing himself, putting a gun to his head. Elsewhere in the cabin, Victoria calls out to her father that she sees a woman outside and daddy, her feet aren't touching the ground. Jeffrey reconsiders killing himself, realizing the girls would be on their own and his solution is to murder them instead. Good thinking. It's pretty messed up, but he clearly isn't too on the level at the moment. But before he shoots Victoria, telling her to face the window, Mama appears, wisps of black hair floating in the air, and grabs Jeffrey dragging him off, looking like a strange blur to Victoria without her glasses. So long, pops! Well, that actually was probably for the best since he was about to kill his daughters. And the girls aren't technically left alone since Mama is there. And as we see, she doesn't want to hurt them, but is in fact interested in protecting the girls from harm and even feeds them, rolling out cherries to them from the darkness. Lots and lots of cherries. Five years later, we meet Jeffrey's equally dashing twin brother, Lucas, who has been searching in vain this whole time for his missing brother and two daughters, to the point of spending all of his money as he reveals to his girlfriend, the rock and roll version of Jessica Chastain, Annabelle, in a black wig and fake tattoos. She even plays bass in a rock band. Oh, hell yeah! Who we first meet her learning that she is not pregnant, which excites her. So clearly she's not interested in kids, which will become a problem soon. And it looks like Lucas's search has finally turned something up. When one of the two trackers goes to rock a piss and finds Jeffrey's crashed car, then using a leftover toy of Victoria's, their bloodhound sniffs its way to Mama's cabin. The girls are still there, tended to by Mama. And in the five years they've been out here have essentially become feral, no longer speaking, but growling, crawling around on all fours. The girls are then brought to a welfare facility under the care of psychiatrist Dr. 
Dreyfus. Dreyfus believes Victoria will be able to retain her speaking vocabulary. While he isn't so sure about Lily, being the younger of the two, her most important developmental years were out in the woods with only the very bizarre caregiver in the form of Mama. So Lily is less used to being in the real world, so to speak, as she hasn't had much experience with it, and will struggle with this throughout her story. Luke introduces himself to the girls, who are initially hesitant, Vic hiding under the bed and swiping at him. But when he pulls out an important object, her glasses, she recognizes them, putting them on and finally being able to see for the first time in years. And upon seeing Luke, immediately believes him to be her father, which makes sense. I mean, it is the same actor and everything. And after some time in recovery, Dreyfus believes the girls have a real chance at having a normal life again, and has a deal for Annabelle and Lucas, who are hoping to get custody of the girls after a claim is made for them by their mother's sister, Jean. Dreyfus offers them a home rent-free to live in with the girls, as long as he can have continued access to them for his own personal case study. The couple agree, though Annabelle obviously has some hesitations about this whole crazy situation thrust upon her. Now suddenly the de facto mother of these two weirdo kids. That's your definition of a reluctant hero right there, folks. This story aspect being one of the strongest aspects to the film. Annie obviously can't leave Luke on his own. Who could do that to someone? So you can't help but feel for her and her situation. Like at dinner, Victoria becomes quickly acclimated to domestic life, at least sitting at the table, while Lily retains much of her feral behavior, not speaking and eating on the floor like an animal nearby. Though we soon learn the girls have another playmate at the house, as Mama has followed them here, first evidenced by a black moth on the wall, which is the most important symbol used in connection with Mama. In folklore, the black moths were regarded as witches, as both are creatures of the night and transform themselves. And this does align with what we see from Mama's spirit. The moths are also considered a harbinger of death which certainly applies to Mama as well. While in bed with Lucas, Mama briefly appears as a black figure in the mirror to Annabelle, startling her. Convinced someone is in the house, she sends Luke to investigate, seeing a moth that lands on the wall, creating a black spot of decay and dark veins that begin to grow out. And Mama emerges from it, pushing Luke, sending him tumbling down the stairs. Yeah, that's gotta hurt. Resulting in him ending up in a coma, leaving Annabelle all on her own to tend to the girls, even though she clearly is uncomfortable around them. Man, that's tough. She of course has no idea about Mama, but figures out something is up. Hearing a woman's voice singing through the air vents and finding the girls playing with her in their room. Mama quickly retreating as Annie enters. Both girls stare towards the closet where she is hiding, the door slightly open. When Annie considers going to it, Vic warns her not to. What's in there, she asks. Nothing, she replies. Oh sure, nothing, nothing at all. Annie then reaches towards the door. Is she gonna open it? Phew. Probably a good choice. During hypnosis sessions with Victoria, Dr. Dreyfus learns more about Mama, and initially he believes that Mama is another personality of Victoria's, though evidence begins to surface that proves there is a real Mama. Victoria at one point revealing Mama's past, recalling that a long time ago, a lady ran away from a hospital for sad people. She took her baby and jumped into the water. When the doctor asks how she knows this, she says that Mama showed her in a dream. This ability is one that we see the spirit use a few times. The ability to manifest dreams into someone else's while they're asleep. Checking into the details of her dream, Dr. Dreyfus learns that there is no mental hospital nearby now, but there was one, St. Gertrude's, that was shut down all the way back in 1878. And a file is discovered for a patient that matches Victoria's story, a woman named Edith Brennan. So, Edith is the person that died and became the spirit called Mama. We later see through another nightmare created by Mama that Annabelle has, unfolding from Edith's POV, witnessing firsthand what happened. When Edith was sent to St. Gertrude's for an unknown reason, most likely mental health issues, she runs into a church brandishing a spike, stabbing it into a nun's neck, darkness forming from the wound, and snatches her baby away, pursued by several men, until reaching the edge of a cliff. Edith covers the baby's eyes, causing the same decay to then appear on its face with her touch. And she walks off the side of the cliff, crashing into a tree before hitting the water and drowning. Dreyfus later discovers another important file tied to Edith that shows us what Mama is after, found in an area of the records room described as being full of things not supposed to be found. Wow, those are some pretty ominous sounding records. The records lady describes that when a graveyard was moved, the smallest parts and remains were brought here to this room, handing him a box, 
the contents of which Mama has been searching for all these years, the remains of her child. When she jumped off the cliff, the baby was actually caught on a tree and didn't fall into the water and drown with her. But Edith didn't realize this and didn't know what happened to her child. And it's the violence surrounding her death along with her not being with her child in the afterlife that has brought Mama back as a spirit. They say a ghost is an emotion bent out of shape, doomed to repeat itself time and time again until it writes the wrong that it did, the wrong being the child. Mama is looking for what she lost, and Edith's spirit won't be at peace until she has her baby back. Even at the hospital in his coma, Luke isn't safe from Mama invading his dreams, the building's electricity buzzing, and Mama being typed out repeatedly on the computer screen, which is actually kind of funny. And Luke finds himself on a roadside with a train track above. His brother creepily emerges, telling him to save his girls and go to the cabin. Luke convulses violently, regaining consciousness from his coma. And though it seemed it was his brother reaching out, obviously it was Mama that is luring him to the cabin or at least keeping him separated from Annie and the girls, since when he heads out there and finds the same spot from his dream, he never actually finds the cabin. And while it's a good thing that the girls are starting to warm up to Annabelle, this makes Mama jealous, putting Annie in danger. Since Mama sees the girls as her own, she reaches out to Dreyfus for help, who again hypnotizes Victoria questioning her about Mama, and shows her a photograph of the real-life Mama, Edith, which Victoria aggressively reacts to screaming for it to go away. But Mama does the opposite, beginning to manifest in the room hearing Victoria upset. And seeing this, Doc is quick to hit the road, but not before seeing Mama as a black figure looming in the window from inside. After this, he begins to hypothesize how it is that Mama appeared in the home, considering that there is an actual portal between the two places, one at Mama's cabin, the other at the house with the girls. And this is how Mama travels between locations, the portal seemingly created by the black moths that make up Mama's spirit. Realizing how extraordinary this all sounds, Dreyfus heads to Clifton Forge in search of proof of his theory. Back at the house, Mama returns turns, showing us the major behavioral differences between the sisters growing. Lily still wants to be with Mama, but Victoria is finally starting to realize that maybe Mama isn't so great after all, since her new mom Annie is a nice, real lady that doesn't kill people. Lily tells her sister to tag along, but she doesn't, which doesn't stop Lily from heading out the window. But Mama has some important business to tend to back at her place, as Dr. Dreyfus has found his way there. He sees the seeping black hole in the wall that does indeed act as the portal between here and the house putting his hand out towards it, as you do, until Mama growls at him from within. He attempts to reason with her, as her creepy moaning grows louder and more intense. And she must not have been interested in what the doc was slinging, or maybe she just sees him as a threat to her being with the girls, and attacks Dreyfus, killing him. And since Mama was busy with him, Lily was left alone to wander around all night in the cold, found the next morning by Annie shivering outside, showing Lily specifically that Mama's more interested in being an angry ghost than a mother. It looks like there might be some hope for Lily to emotionally move past Mama, when in a tender moment, Annie warms Lily's cold fingers with her breath, Lily looking up to her emotionally. But of course, Victoria isn't as happy when she sees the two of them, knowing Mama ain't gonna like what's going on here. In search of Dreyfus, the three head to his office, and Annie seizes the opportunity to take his big box of case files on the family and the doctor's laptop, discovering that Dreyfus was intending to write a book about the girls and Mama, using them for his own personal gain. She watches a session with Victoria, asking about what happened to Mama's baby in the dream. But Mama didn't show her because she doesn't know what happened to it. And Annie opens the box from the forgotten records room, discovering the child's remains inside, putting the pieces together. Realizing this is what she is looking for, perhaps she can finally return the child to its mother and end this once and for all. But before she gets the chance, an angry mama arrives, jealous at her increasing bond with the girls, floating motionless at first, before turning and quickly darting at Lily. And Annie quickly rejoins them as mama returns, crawling down the wall, her body contorted out of shape, kind of like Pennywise in that one part. In the hallway, mama gets a hold of Annie, jamming a finger into her back and seems to suck the life force out of her as her skin fades to a ghostly white. Victoria calls out upset, telling Mama she promised and to leave her alone. Angry that she is defending Annie, Mama crawls to Victoria, taking her glasses in her hand and breaking them as the glasses kind of symbolize her change back to normal society. Since she spent all those years essentially blind with Mama at the cabin, even if she can't take out Annie, 
Mama has a plan to get the girls, possessing their snooping aunt's body. Coming to, discovering the girls missing, Annie grabs the child's remains, following Dreyfus's map to the cabin. Along the way, almost running into Lucas, who has apparently been wandering around the area aimlessly for some time. At the cabin, they find the leftover shell of Aunt Jean, and outside see the girls standing at the edge of a cliff. The same cliff Edith jumped from in the past, preparing to reenact her emotional loop, this time with Victoria and Lily. Mama holds out her arms to the girls to come to her, Lily walking towards her, calling her mama. But Lucas grabs her, trying to hold her back, until Mama retaliates, sucking his life force enough to take him out of commission. Annie calls out to Mama by her real name, Edith, offering her the child. She takes it, removing the blanket, seeing the baby's skeleton inside. Upon seeing this, Mama wails, falling to her knees crying, reverting back to her human appearance as Edith. And from behind, Lily calls out to her, still remembering Mama as her only parent. And Mama's face turns monstrous again, thinking since my baby's dead, why not take these? She grabs Annie, spinning her in the air and crushing her, then tossing her aside. But Annie refuses to give up as they continue to march towards the edge of the cliff. She grabs the tassel on Victoria's robe, showing that she truly does love and care about her after all this crazy crap they've been through. And Victoria asks, to stay, which Mama allows, realizing she belongs with Annie. Victoria then saying goodbye to Mama and her sister, who step off the cliff, floating in the air. Mama wraps Lily in a black shroud, enveloping the both of them in a cocoon of sorts. More moth stuff! It's metamorphosis time. They suddenly plummet through the air towards the water, on the way both looking to each other and Lily giggles, the color changing inside to blue, and then blinding white as they hit the branch, exploding into moths. Up above, both girls cry, holding each other as Luke comes to, joining them. In a way, in the end, everyone kind of got what they wanted, except the two sisters being separated forever. Annabelle got Lucas back, as well as Victoria, who she had grown to love. Victoria could go back to a normal family with Annabelle, Mama finally got herself a child in Lily, breaking the spirit's repetition once and for all. And Lily, who truly only knew Mama as her mother, did not have to give up on her, able to be with her forever. And Lucas got both Annabelle and a foster daughter with Victoria. And even though Lily is now with Mama, we see that she isn't actually gone for good, as a blue moth appears, landing right on Victoria's finger, Victoria recognizing it as her sister before it flies away. So she still is with her in some form. The three hugs together now as a family. The supernatural ordeal with Mama finally at a rest. That'll do it for this ending explained on Mama. The movie is successful almost entirely thanks to Jessica Chastain's performance, and it's cool to think about her maybe reuniting with the Muschettis in IT Chapter 2 as adult Beverly. I really hope that happens, but probably best to avoid the punk look for Jess next time. What did you guys think of Mama and its ending? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Make sure to like, subscribe, and follow. And send me any video suggestions. I love them. Thanks for watching Downflix. See you next time.